Hello friends, today I am here with a new topic of pulmonary physiology, oxygen transport, a very important topic in the pulmonary physiology. So here onwards I keep uploading few other concepts regarding this pulmonary physiology. So today let me take a take on this oxygen transport. So before talking this, I want to talk about the partial pressure of respiratory gas at sea level. So at the sea level as you have, you have been saying in this box they vary in this fashion so why so there is a difference in concentration of the respiratory gases at different places like in the atmospheric air and in alveoli so the three reasons for that are humidification so humidification decreases by the time as dry air is getting inside in the trachea it get humidified so this humidification decreases the concentration and secondly partial replacement so from the alveoli only partial amount of oxygen is going out and partial amount of atmospheric air is being taken in and third reason is there is a continuous diffusion of oxygen carbon dioxide across the respiratory membrane so all these three reasons they constitute for difference in the concentration of gases in atmospheric air and in the alveolar air so now coming to the oxygen transport so how is this oxygen transport used for the significance all metabolic activities of the cell they depend upon oxygen so every tissue every cell requires oxygen and for every tissue and cell our body is supplying the oxygen in two methods one is in the dissolved state and other is in the combined with hemoglobin as oxyhemoglobin so major amount of oxygen is transported by combining with hemoglobin as oxyhemoglobin that is 20 ml of oxygen is transported by 100 ml of blood whereas in dissolved state only less amount of oxygen is transported so this in the dissolved state it depends upon the law called the henry's law which depends upon amount of oxygen dissolved is directly proportional to the partial pressure of oxygen and therefore 0.3 ml of oxygen is transported per 100 ml of blood flow here i want to tell something about the oxygen poisoning what is this oxygen poisoning so we know only when the alveolar pressure is less only then air comes inside when a person breathes at high alveolar partial pressure of oxygen what happens is more oxygen is transported in the dissolved form so this dissolved form oxygen transport it increases the oxygen at tissues this causes the brain convulsions and finally lead to death this is all about the oxygen poisoning next i would like to talk about the hemoglobin i very like about this adult hemoglobin it will be having two alpha chains two beta chains it is type a hemoglobin type a so this hemoglobin can combine with four oxygen molecules at a time and fetal hemoglobin we know it is hemoglobin f by the end of first year this hemoglobin f is replaced by hemoglobin a so oxygen combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin is a reversible reaction and here the oxygen is loosely bound whenever there is partial pressure of oxygen is decreased or increased partial rate of carbon dioxide this reaction can happen in the reverse manner liberating the oxygen now what is the percentage saturation of hemoglobin progressive increase in hemoglobin bound oxygen oxygen bound hemoglobin that is simply oxyhemoglobin levels increasing the progressive increase in oxyhemoglobin is nothing but saturation of hemoglobin when partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is more so arterial blood the saturation of hemoglobin is 97 percent because in the arterial blood we find more amount of oxygen and in the venous blood the saturation of hemoglobin is 75 percent as we find less amount of oxygen there now i would like to tell about some important calculation here very very important a hundred ml of blood approximately contain 50 grams of hemoglobin one gram of hemoglobin we know can carry 1.34 ml of oxygen then how much of 15 grams of hemoglobin can carry it is 1.34 into 15 that is simply approximately equal to 20 ml actually it comes to 19.8 like that so uh, let me take our approximation of 20 ml therefore the 15 grams of hemoglobin present in 100 ml of the blood it carries 20 ml of oxygen 20 ml of oxygen and 5 ml of oxygen is transported from lung to the tissue by each 100 ml of the blood flow 
Now I'd like to discuss the most important one that is oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve. What is this oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve? There are some factors which causes the disassociation of oxygen from hemoglobin. So I would like to tell here increased concentration of uh, carbon dioxide and H plus ion in the blood causes disassociation of oxygen from the hemoglobin to the tissues. This effect is called Bode's effect. This effect is called the Bode's effect. This Bode's effect is mainly operated at the tissues for release of oxygen from hemoglobin to supply the tissues. Now what causes this graph to shift towards the right side? What the increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide, increased H plus ion concentration or decreased pH and increased temperature and increased TPG. And in a self hemoglobin and sickle cell anemia, here it will be having decreased affinity to the oxygen and it will be having more oxygen unload. So as partial pressure of carbon dioxide increased, there will be decreased affinity to the oxygen and more oxygen unloading as it is giving off oxygen to the tissues. Now, what causes the shift towards the left? Decreased the same here, see to the right shift, everything goes on increasing. So better we take the hydrogen concentration itself rather than the pH. To avoid the confusion and to the left shift decreased pco2 hydrogen concentration temperature and dpg this also happens in meth hemoglobin carbon monoxide poisoning and also in the fetal hemoglobin because fetal hemoglobin will be having more affinity to the oxygen than the adult hemoglobin so on the left shift denotes that it is having more affinity to the oxygen and less oxygen unloading and less oxygen unloading this is all about the oxygen hemoglobin disassociation curve so while plotting this graph it is also important to determine about the axis so on the x-axis will be having partial pressure of oxygen on the y-axis will be having hemoglobin saturation yes now what is this DPG or BPG? Eh, both of them are same. That is 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. It is an important metabolic product formed in the RBC metabolism which is present in different concentrations in different metabolic conditions in our body. So this is all about the oxygen transport, oxygen disassociation curve. Now let me take a take on this hypoxia. What is this hypoxia? Decreased oxygen availability to the tissue or poor blood flow to the tissue. So this decreased oxygen availability to the tissue happens with pure blood flow to the tissue. There is oh, four types of hypoxia seen. Hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia, histotoxic hypoxia. Hypoxic hypoxia, it happens due to decreased atmospheric and alveolar oxygen content and ventilation per perfusion ratio mismatch arterial venous shunt impairment in diffusion across the respiratory membrane anemic hypoxia it is due to anemia and carbon monoxide poisoning and stagnant hypoxia is due to general circulation defect or local circulation defect and histotoxic hypoxia it happens due to po poisoning of cellular oxygenating enzymes which decreases the cellular activity for using oxygen due to the toxicity or the vitamin deficiency vitamin deficiency so guys if you like my video please share it with your friends if you think anything is missing please comment